Last question. Uh, you said that you weren't uh, you weren't going, but you would be watching the uh, the debate for a vice president. Have you thought of Vice President Ramaswamy? Well, I think he's great. Look, anybody that said I'm the best uh, president in a generation, I don't know. You have to define generation, but so long time. And uh, he said it a couple of times, and he said it in a hundred years. So I, I have to like a guy like that. You know, I can't get up, upset with him. But he's a smart guy. Uh, he's a young guy. Uh, he's got a lot of talent. He's a very, very, uh, a very intelligent person. He's got good energy, and he he could be in some form of something. I tell you, I think he'd be very good. I think mm. he's very good. I think he's really distinguished himself. He's starting to get out there a little bit. He's a little bit getting a little bit controversial. I got to tell him be a little bit careful because <laughs> some things you have to, some things you have to hold in just a little bit, right? But yeah. he's, uh, he's got a lot of good energy. I will tell you, and he's he's. Uh, He's been very nice to me, and and you know most of them have, other than Christie. Don't forget, Christie left with an eight oh, yeah. percent approval rating. Oh yeah, it was horrible. He left with, and he was tied up in Bridgegate. The whole thing yeah. it was a mess. It was. He was a disaster. It, it was amazing how there is the new generation and the the old generation of of Republicans that just seem to be completely out of touch with what time it is. Yeah. So they don't get it. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. We got to talk about Vivek demolishing the mainstream liberal media once again. And this time, he's actually demolishing these two soy boys on TMZ who are challenging him on his claim that the climate change agenda is a hoax. Now, I just want to be clear. Babe Ake never said that climate change is a hoax. He's saying that the climate change agenda is a hoax. What does he mean by the climate change agenda? What he means is that this this idea that the world is going to end in 12 years and that we have to go back to the stone age in regards to our quality of life in order to avoid human extinction at the hands of climate change, right? Which again, it's just, it's ridiculous. Okay. So again, Vivek here is saying things that the Republican party, right? His counterparts really don't want to talk about. Okay. He's actually articulating clear policies. He's very clear about what his agenda is, what he wants to do. He wants to put America first and it's pissing a lot of people off the right and the left, right? Both sides are pissed off. Okay. And they resulted to essentially straw manning him and taking all of his statements out of context and trying to use his own words against him. When again, the guy is just, he's light years ahead of most of these stooges in regards to the ability to debate and just general knowledge on this subject. So Again, he's just demolishing people in the mainstream liberal media one out the one out the one. And the meltdown is just entertaining. Okay. I've never seen anything like this in my life. And it is one of these things where I am living in the moment of it, right? Because we may not ever see something like this again. So yeah, he's going to talk about climate change uh, with, uh, again, these two soy boys on TMZ. And uh, again, it is fantastic to watch him destroy these guys point by point. Because again, a lot of these people, they're just parroting talking points. They actually haven't studied any of this stuff. They don't know anything about it. They're just parroting their own talking points that are fed to them by the woke establishment. So let's go ahead and get into it. You know, we're in Los Angeles and um, we just had this crazy tropical storm. And again, I'm kind of an old dog and I've never seen anything like that in my lifetime. Maui burned up, at least Lahaina did, and the country is experiencing temperatures that we've never seen before, as is the world. And I heard what you said during the debate um, where you kind of brushed aside climate change. What do you think is causing all this? Yeah, so let me give you my actual views on this. It happens to be something I've studied quite carefully in the last several years. The climate change agenda is a hoax, is what I said. And what I mean by that is that the temperature related or climate related disaster death rate, tornadoes, hurricanes, heat wave, fires, the number of deaths over the last 100 years is down by 98%. For every 100 people that died of a climate related disaster in 1920, that number is two people today. That fact is not disputed. The reason why is more abundant and plentiful access to fossil fuels. More people die today still, eight times as many more people die of cold temperatures rather than warm ones. 
the right answer to all temperature related deaths is more abundant access to fossil fuels. So here's the thing, right? The woke mainstream liberal media uh, tries to spin Bevin Ramaswamy's position on climate change to me. Well, he, he just wants more air conditions, right? More air conditions is the key to solving climate change, right? And they're presenting it as if he's saying that more fossil fuels is going to, I guess, mitigate climate change when Vivek actually is arguing that we need to adapt, right? We don't need to focus on mitigation because mitigation just, I mean, practically speaking, it's just not going to happen, okay? Uh, as long as we don't get China in line, right? If China is pumping CO2 in the atmosphere, it's not happening, right? We're not mitigating anything. I don't care if our net emissions goes to zero, okay? You're not making a damn dent in climate change if you don't fix China, right? And if China's not getting on board, if India's not getting on board, if the rest of the world's not getting on board, nothing's happening, okay? So the approach that he's taking here is practical in the sense that he's saying that we need to use more fossil fuels in order to adapt to climate change. Whatever's happening, okay, and regardless of why it's happening or why you believe it's happening, uh, we need to use fossil fuels. Fossil fuels are the key to adaptation, okay? Not mitigation, adaptation. Those are two different things. He's actually a moderate on this position. The earth is covered by more green surface area coverage today than it was half a century or a century ago because carbon dioxide is plant food. So there, these are the these are hard facts, not disputed, but that you don't hear from the climate agenda. But but, 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 hold on, but, 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 wouldn't the the reduction in deaths be more related to technology that's allowed us yes. to to warn technology people and to get by, people out of the way of danger? And there's nothing to do with fossil fuels. Technology powered by fossil fuels. Tech what an idiot! Did you just hear this idiot again? This is what I'm talking about. These guys are. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they're not equipped to be doing these types of interviews. This guy just said that, hey, you just said that there are less deaths related to climate. Um, that's because of technology, not because of fossil fuels. It has nothing. To, it's like, bro, no, you, are you are you are you dumb? It has everything to do with fossil fuels, right? It has everything to do with fossil fuels. So what's happening is that you do have these extreme heat events. But some of these countries, like, for example, in Europe during last year's heat wave, they had to rely on fossil fuels. Why? Because their renewables, their forms of renewable energy just did not have enough output. There was not enough energy to deal with the heat waves, right? So in order to supply people with relief, air conditioning to make sure they don't uh, get a heat stroke, right? Or burn to death, okay? Or anything like that. Um, they had to start burning more fossil fuels because fossil fuels were the key to adapting to the climate right adapting to the heat wave but again idiots like this they don't understand they don't care about practicality i'm a practical guy right as a conservative i am very practical right i don't live in cuckoo for cocoa puff world i don't live in la la land i don't live in an imaginary world i am super practical when it comes to this issue of climate change adaptation is way more practical than mitigation. Mitigation is not happening, right? And they won't, but they won't tell you that though, right? The cult is not going to tell you that. They're not going to tell you, look, doesn't matter how much you vote for Democrats. Doesn't matter if they lower our emissions to net zero. As long as China is still responsible for 30, 40% of the world's emissions, which they are, the US is only responsible for 15%. Long as India is still pumping CO2 to the atmosphere, as long as you still have industrial revolutions going on in these other uh countries these developing countries where they're going to be burning coal putting emissions to the atmosphere it's going to happen right it's going to happen and you're not going to slow it down and this is using their own arguments in regards to the causes of ch climate change right but in general the climate has been changing since the beginning of time right so again um there's nothing that you can do about it if you're not getting China and all these other countries on board, but they never want to talk about that. The climate activists should be at Xi Jinping's palace, right? If they really want to stop climate change, okay? If they really want to save humanity, quote unquote, save humanity, show up to Xi Jinping's palace, but they won't because we all know what would happen if they did. <laughs> They'd be in jail or worse. Technology powered by fossil fuels, and that's my point. So I favor adaptation. I favor climate mastery. 
Look at the likes of what Bjorn Lomberg to Alex Epstein to even Steve Coonan, a physicist who served in the Obama administration. I've read all their books cover to cover. I think the reality is the climate change policies are going to be more hostile to human flourishing than actual the threats posed by climate change itself. But if, but, so but 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 I, I got to stop you. you at a point at a point when it gets too hot, people can't survive, and it's getting hotter We're not gonna and hotter no and hotter. And There's I mean, no you business. you tell that to the folks in Lahaina <laughs> that you need to adapt. And they're looking at it saying, how do we adapt when we're running for our lives into the ocean? First and foremost, how do you know how these people feel? And why are you trying to declare that what happened in Maui, Lahaina, why are you trying to say that, that that's climate change? We don't know if climate change had anything to do with that, right? We don't know at all, okay? Why this disaster happened? But yet this man is coming out and saying... This happened because of climate change, right? Also, the hurricane that hit California or the tropical storm, climate change, right? Um, you know, the, the hurricane that just hit Florida, climate change. That's what Andrew Mitchell was saying. Again, every natural disaster, and we've had natural disasters ever since we could uh, document them, right? Oh, that's climate change, right? Before we started burning fossil fuels, we had devastating natural disasters. That's what they call natural disasters right but again these people want you to think everything even tornadoes when it is clear according to the climate scientists that we don't know if tornadoes or the frequency of them is related to climate change oh this tornado happened in the midwest because of the climate change republicans blood is on your hands right again it's, it's ridiculous well i happen to have talked to some of the folks in lahaina actually so, so as, as have we as have we by the down. way but good. I, I'm glad for that, because I think we should look after our fellow Americans before we're looking halfway around the world to places like Ukraine, where many politicians have more concern than for Maui. But here's here's what I would tell them. And actually, what is based on what they told me, you want to know what actually caused more deaths in Maui? There's somebody who is a climate agenda activist who is a left wing appointee who believes in indigenous water rights that delayed during a critical period, half a day, the provision of water to put out those fires. That is wrong. You actually have a timber policy problem in this country where environmental activists for years have now stopped the normal process of actually regular fires that don't actually reach the scale that we've seen from Canada to Maui because they're actually planned and controlled as they have been even for much of human history. And so again, I think the policy response in the name of this new climate religion is literally causing more deaths. And the reality is, and I can call out exactly where the farce is, the climate agenda has nothing to do with the climate because the same people who are opposed to carbon emissions here in the United States are totally fine when those same carbon emissions get shifted to China. And the same opponents to fossil fuels and carbon emissions are also the biggest opponents to nuclear energy. Facts. Facts. They don't want nuclear energy for whatever reason, even though that's the cleanest form of energy and the most efficient clean form of energy that we have. Right. They don't want that for whatever reason. OK. Um, and they don't want to go and protest at Xi Jinping's palace, but these people claim that they're all about trying to mitigate climate change, right? But they don't want to do the things that you actually need to do to do what they claim that they want to do. They want to point the finger at Republicans, right? That's what they want to do. And conservatives, it's you guys' fault, right? You're, you, you got blood on your hands. The greatest form of carbon-free energy production to mankind. And so the reality is this is about global equity. This is about letting China catch up. And I think Facts. I'm the only person who's studied this issue and has is not captured by donor interests to have the liberty to actually say it. This agenda is a hoax. Our global surface temperatures going up, yes, but we need to deal with that through mastery, through technological advances that will require more, not less use of fossil fuels. And by but what the way, if the fossil fuels are causing the climate, the, the temperature to go up? And we know that. that you <laughs> said that you, everything is based on data and results. There is actual hard data that says the use of fossil fuels has raised the temperature on the planet. That's a fact. <laughs> yeah. This guy is so dense, right? These guys, these are, I don't believe they're dumb. I really do believe that Vivek just has the curse of presenting very complex ideas in a way that is very nuanced. And I, I really do think that a lot of people have trouble actually really understanding what he's saying because one, what he's saying is not what they hear every single day in the mainstream liberal media. And two, they're just not used to hearing somebody be able to articulate this level 
of an argument, okay, when it comes to certain issues. They're so used to simple things that politicians spout, right, without actually really taking a position or saying anything. They, they really can't understand the concept of what he's saying is that, yes, global temperatures are going up, but the answer to, to adaptation, not mitigating, adapting is going to be fossil fuels. You cannot adapt without fossil fuels, which was evidenced by what I just told you guys, the example of what happened in Europe, where last year, with doing a global heat wave, they had to start burning more fossil fuels, right? Because they needed fossil fuels to prevent people from dying, okay? But again, that's over these guys' head. Can't, can't grasp that very simple concept in my opinion but again they're not used to hearing this type of stuff and i really do think it's a blessing and a curse for vivek because a lot of stuff he says probably does go over people's heads because they're not <laughs> used to hearing intelligent people be in politics because they're not a lot of intelligent people in politics i'm keeping it 100 with you okay yeah but there's no evidence that says that's going to be an existential risk to humanity and the other thing i favor well, which, I, which I, 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 wait a minute wait wait wait, wait. How, how is there no how is there no risk to humanity that when is an the, existential risk to humanity. But, don't, but, don't, but don't you agree that, that right now, if things go the way they are, this will be the coolest summer that you will ever experience in your lifetime? In a year where still eight times as many people are going to die of cold temperatures rather than warm ones. But that doesn't, yeah, make, by, by that, the way, but that doesn't make it okay and by the way, extreme if the cold, temperature is going up every extreme year. Extreme cold is part of climate change right, as well. Right, right. It's not just so, heat. Actually, this is this is what's funny about this. is And this, is, this happens to be an area of studied for a long time and so this is an interesting conversation to me he keeps saying that right because he's letting them know without actually letting them know i actually know what i'm talking about right i'm not just giving you talking points that were fed to me by you know their liberal handlers which is clear with these guys right he's like no no, no i've actually read about this i know this um let me actually continue to tell you that i i actually really know about this right these aren't talking points it's hilarious, right? This guy is just on a different speed intellectually than everybody in the GOP race and everybody in the mainstream global media. It is fascinating, okay? I, I, I'm pretty sure this man feels like he's talking to children right now in regards to their level of knowledge about this subject, but they're trying to debate him on it, but they, they clearly haven't read anything. They just repeating what they've been told, okay? Because they, they can't even grasp this man's basic argument that adaptation is more practical than mitigation okay which is it's clear this is the argument that he's presenting and they're not arguing against that they just keep <laughs> fear-mongering about the world ending right that this is an existential threat to humans but they're not engaging with his actual argument it's, it really is fascinating stuff in the 1970s the same group was advocating for less use of fossil fuels because we were going to face a looming ice age now the some of the same people are making the argument that it has to be because of global warming the reality is climate change is as old as man. Man-made climate change is as old as man. And so the reality and the hard fact is what I'll challenge everybody else on the other side of this issue to do is at least we should be able to find common ground on nuclear energy. And the mystery to me is how the biggest opponents to fossil fuels are also the biggest opponents to nuclear energy. Facts. Which leads me to the farce, and it is a farce, that this climate agenda has to do with the climate. Listen to Greta Thunberg or other advocates, at least they're more honest. This is not just about the climate, it is about justice. Well, what does that mean? It means global equity. It means punishing the West so the rest of the world can catch up. That is what this agenda at its core is about. Nuclear energy might be too good at solving the problem because it still allows America to continue its economic growth. That's why they're against it here. While China has stage four nuclear reactors, while we're still at stage two here, PetroChina emits more carbon, buying up the projects that we force Chevron to drop in the United States of America. So yes, that agenda is a farce. But I think that the right answer, what we should measure, is how do we reduce the deaths and how do we reduce the negative impacts on human health from everything, including not just climate related factors, but all factors. And I think for the foreseeable future, that is going to require more, not less use of fossil fuels and more, not less use of nuclear energy. That's what I care about, human prosperity, human flourishing in the United States of America for all Americans, from Maui to the south side of Chicago, to New York, to Iowa, to New Hampshire. Ukraine's not included in that list. That's my job as the next US president and I will stand for that accordingly. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, he just destroyed these guys. They, they don't have anything, okay? They weren't even engaging with the real argument, okay? They, they weren't even rebutting anything he was saying because they don't, again, they don't know anything. But ultimately, he's right. What, what it's about is not about trying to lower global temperatures. They know that's not happening. What it's about is global equity. It's about allowing some of these other countries 
to catch up to the United States and basically slowing down our progress for everybody else. I mean, look what happened with uh, Greta Thunberg. She was complaining because there were windmills that were being uh, built on so-called indigenous land in some country in Europe. I forgot exactly what country it was. But she was complaining about that, right? The person that's like, oh, we need to build more windmills, just not on indigenous land, right? Which, again, tells you what this is all about. It's not about do whatever we need to do to, quote, unquote, save humanity. It's literally about inconveniencing uh, people who, you know, the woke revolutionaries feel like have, you know, privilege or whatever and trying to give the less privilege uh, the opportunity to catch up, right? The same way that the race agenda is a farce in the United States where they try to pretend like there's still some type of systemic racism holding so-called black and brown people back when that's clearly not the case. What it's actually really about is holding back white people, right, in favor of other people that the woke revolutionaries say are less fortunate or less privileged. It's not about actually solving racism because what these people are doing is that they're pushing more racism in the name of trying to end racism, which just creates more racism. It's all about power and control and equity. That's what it's about. And, uh, yeah, listening to these two dunces <laughs> try to argue with Vivek, uh, I know that for him it was probably mind-numbing, right? But, hey, he's continuing to destroy everybody in the liberal media, including TMZ. It's very entertaining to watch. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.